<laughs> oh, Iran, they're no worry to us, just a Middle Eastern problem, right? Wrong. According to both Israel and the United States estimates, they'll be able to reach North America with missiles as soon as 2015. Yeah, that's just three years away. Well, joining us now from Ottawa is our friend David Harris, a director of Insignus, an expert in security and intelligence. Hey, welcome back to the program, David. Thanks a lot, Ezra. Now, I mean, we like to think of the Middle East as a problem way over there, and that's half the benefit of it is let's let them do their killing over there while we're safe here. But news from both Israeli and American intelligence predictions say, well, within three years, they'll probably have a missile with a sufficient range to give us a whack on the west coast of North America. Uh, what's your assessment of this information, and what do you think we should do with it? Uh, you bet. I mean, this is consistent with all of the information we've had concerning missile developments, although, understandably, the uh, frightening Iranian nuclear developments have received a lot of focus. The rate of progress that the Iranians have demonstrated on the missilery front is really something. They can already, it's believed, move into uh, Eastern Europe on that basis. And targets in Western Europe are easily conceivable in uh, the immediate future. As you say, uh, North America is going to be, it's believed, within range within the next two or three years. Well, that's a crazy so, thing. I mean, right now, Europe, to this day, literally as we speak, European countries like France and Britain and Greece are paying cash to Iran for oil. So they are fun. That's how Iran makes its money, through oil sales. So the very Europe that is being threatened by Iran is propping up Iran with, with oil cash. What, what steps can be taken? I mean, I thought we already had sanctions on Iran. I had no idea that Europe was still buying oil from them. What can we do? I mean, or, or is diplomacy and sanctions no longer the way to do it? Should we just move to a military response? Well, I'm afraid that uh, the sanctions have really not been successful. We've been attempting them in various forms for a great many years. We've had any number of UN and other resolutions, and yet here we are now, facing what, without any particular exaggeration, can soberly be described as a life and death situation. We've seen, if anything, an expansion of the Iranian program. Indeed, every uh, responsible indication is a great expansion of uh, Iranian uh, nuclear development, especially with the recent International Atomic Energy Agency conclusions that have been reached. So, yes, the uh, non-military side has appeared to have been profitless at best, in many ways may have been said to have emboldened uh, Iran, and so now we are here to make those very hard decisions that we have invincibly refused to have made over many years of provocation. And in the face of ample evidence that Iran has been more than prepared to undertake terroristic and military and paramilitary activity uh, well beyond its own hemisphere. We've seen uh, such evidence in relation, of course, to South America, terrorist attacks there, uh, Berlin naturally, and then the recent allegations about uh, an attempt to possibly assassinate the Saudi uh, representative in the heart of the United States in Washington. Hmm. So not an augury of uh, cool, calm and balanced restraint from Iran now. One can only imagine what would be coming our way uh, were they to obtain nuclear weapons. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. These aren't the Taliban with little jerry-rigged uh, improvised explosive devices or folks who have to hijack a plane like Al-Qaeda. These are, this is a serious government with tens of billions of dollars of oil money flowing in. And not just that, far more importantly, they have major allies, the Chinese and the Russians, giving them technological advice and giving them diplomatic protection at the United Nations. I got a question for you. When Israel took out Saddam Hussein's nuclear reactor almost 30 years ago, it went in, uh, got in and got out quickly, I think before anyone noticed. Do you think it's even possible in 2012 to attack the Iranian nuclear and missile program without, I don't know, someone's trying to stop it, either Russians or Chinese or, or God forbid, even the Americans trying to stop it. Is there, can we do another surgical strike like was done 30 years ago, or is that not even possible? Well, it'll be nowhere near as easy and straightforward. You've got a multiplicity of targets, as many have indicated, but most notably the enrichment facilities at Nantans, which may be partially underground, and of course the really remarkable uh, place they've got at Forda within a mountain. So uh, when you look at those things, it's a big challenge. That doesn't mean, though, that you might not be able to localize some specific installations, especially if you have the right kind of firepower and weaponry, including bunker buster bombs of appropriate type to uh, take out 
portions of the system that would undermine it, at least for the purposes of a handful of years, which may in and of itself represent a considerable achievement and maybe hold out the possibility even longer term of regime change before they can get their potentiality back into shape. Uh, you know, we had Daniel Pipes on. He's from the Middle East Forum. He said that there is the strategic option of using tactical nuclear devices to take out these hardened bunkers. Now, to me, that sounds so politically beyond the pale, it's a non-starter. But, but I'm starting to think that if no one does anything about Iran, it's like no one doing anything about Hitler. He was arming, he was threatening, he was promising what he was going to do, and the world stood by. Do you think it, that Israel, in its desperation, would ever consider using tactical nukes to take out the Iranian uh, weaponry if America and NATO did not? It's, it's hard to conceive of they're doing that in light of so much existing anti-Israel propaganda. You can already see it shaping up so as to blame Israel for any of the predictable outrages that Iran would inflict post an assault upon the Western world and other areas. But when we remember that the Iranian regime appears to be immune to the dynamic of deterrence that kept us all in one piece during the Cold War, thanks to its uh, Armageddon embracing theology, it may be the kind of situation that Israel might ultimately feel constrained to pursue. I hope it doesn't come to that. David Harris, thanks very much for joining us from Ottawa. I appreciate your time. Thanks, Ezra. Hey,